friends like Terry. I think Susie gets the award for going to the most events related to this book. She came to two at the church, and she and Barb and Dolly and I have been going to the ones that the group of churches are doing. And um, mm -hmm. they're wonderful. It's been in yeah. fact, you'll recognize some of the things we're sharing tonight. Yes. Mm -hmm. at, just at your place, the first thing at your place is um, could you survive in poverty? And this is something that they shared with us at the first session. And it's just for you to look at and think about. And then the other side is, could you survive? Yes. And so it's just something for you to think about tonight and in the future, because it's quite fascinating. Um, first of all, thanks for being here. Thanks for being part of this endeavor. It's been quite enlightening, at least for me. And um, I appreciate you all doing this and being part of it. Sally, are you going to join us? I am. There's even a seat by your spousal unit. Oh, <laughs> It's like, it's like I don't see him very often. <laughs> Too much. Huh? The sheet that says poverty is, we're going to start tonight. Um, we're going to use this in two ways. First, we're going to use it as a prayer. And Brian and Karen and I will read those lines. And at the end of each of the lines, the leader will say, Lord, in your mercy. And we ask you to respond as we do on Sundays often. Hear our prayer so that this becomes our prayer to begin tonight. So let us be in prayer. Poverty is pain, physical pain. Lord, in your mercy. Hear, hear, our, hear our prayer. prayer. Poverty is traumatic. Lord, in your mercy. Hear, hear, our, hear prayer. our prayer. Poverty is the colostomy bag and wheelchair, the night terrors and bullets that maimed but didn't kill. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Poverty is instability. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Poverty is the constant fear that it will get even worse. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Poverty is the loss of liberty. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. Poverty is the feeling that your government is against you. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Poverty is embarrassing, shame inducing. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Poverty is diminished life and personhood. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. In your mercy, hear our prayer, and the people of God say, Amen. Amen. Short list. Most of these are listed in Desmond's book at some point. In fact, the markers of poverty, I believe, are in chapter one that he lists. So what I'd invite us to do is something we did last night in the bigger group at the Hebrew congregation, is um, we added to that list. So if you were to complete that sentence, and remember, we've got people up here on the screen, too. So, um, yeah. Wrote that on there. But what's spinning? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, you have to loosen that. Well, the tall person knows that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Do it one time And I was amazed. I don't know if Barb and Susie can confirm or not confirm this, but I was amazed at the list we came up with in like five minutes last night. Um, what would you add to that? Poverty is isolation. Mm. Uncertainty. Consuming. Specifically, time consuming. <clears throat> time consuming. Preventable. Preventable. Demeaning. Generational. Generational. 
Exhausting. Okay, let's see. I heard exhausting. And I heard dehumanizing. Yeah. Fearful. Yeah. <laughs> Intentional. Intentional. Harmful to children. <laughs> I didn't realize that you're not seen by what is it? Lack of choice. Lack of choice. Do it again. Just start again. There we go. Get it. So Penny's having trouble with her. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We see you, Penny. <laughs> Hello. Penny, we see you. We <laughs> <laughs> hear you. I want to move that spear in the picture. I would say expensive. Expensive. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Unhealthy. Unhealthy. Yeah. Did I miss one over there? Unhealthy. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Nancy. What about preventable? Um, yeah, I think someone will send that. Yeah. Sometimes hidden. Mm. Yeah. Never ending. <laughs> Pretty good list. Mm -hmm. As we think about that list and um, remember back to when we started each of the <laughs> conversations. The amazing Karen and the amazing Brian put together oh, yes. a very cool thing that we're going to look at next as we think about what poverty is and so if what you've been learning. Yeah. So if you participated in one of the conversations we had before, you would might remember that we started with the same question in all of them, which is what three words describe your experience of reading Poverty by America? We recorded those. And then um, Brian so skillfully put them into a word cloud here. Because oh before there was Wordle the game, there was Wordle the thing you could make. <laughs> <laughs> and for those of you joining us online, um, we can make sure that you get copies of these handouts that we have in here if you're interested in them. Um, so what we wanted you to do is just take a look at these words and think through um, for you, what words linger as you think about and reflect on your reading of the book? Depressing. Actually, I'm writing down who's here. Oh, okay. Never mind. <laughs> you write by mind. I can do that. Then. <laughs> what other words linger with you? Anger. Anger. Yeah. Misconceptions. I think that was so mm -hmm. big. Mm -hmm. Greed. Mm -hmm. What was that one? Greed. Mm -hmm. Guilt. Mm -hmm.
Any other words? I think complicit, I mean, mm -hmm. that word in here stands out to me, and mm -hmm. maybe that's what we're having this conversation for. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That one stands out for me too, and vast as well, just how mm -hmm. interconnected everything is. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Why is it you think those words are particular, the ones you've mentioned, why is it mm -hmm. you think those stand out for you? Well, I think I said in my group, you know, when he talked about some of the other programs like the student loans and the mortgage deduction, that, that's why I said Shane, because I mean, I use both of those. Mm -hmm. You know, that got me through grad school, that helped me buy a house. And I never <laughs> thought of that as being, you know, impacting, mm -hmm. you know, people in poverty. Because they can't, they can't get them. They, I think at least they can't get the mortgage, the house. Mm -hmm. And then that ties into misconceptions, because again, when yeah. he talked about all the different programs, mm -hmm. You know, aren't necessarily for the people in poverty. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I agree too. Oh, sorry. No, that's all right. Thanks for joining us. We're talking about our baby. cloud right now. These are the words that are going to need to be original sessions. And yeah. then what words linger now for each of us and why? Could be something from the list, but it could be something new and different. I think generally for me, the words that stand out on this are the words that I have not applied to poverty prior to reading this book. Mm -hmm. I mean, a lot of them I felt and know a lot before. Mm -hmm. And that's why the complicit one is so strong. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Shocking, shocking how big the problem is mm -hmm. for razor room, long lasting, seemingly mm -hmm. hopeless. Okay. Yeah, here I'll go at the front door and she's joining us here. So we just want to give her a handout so she can. Oh. Here, one more fit out there. Oh, there. She's right there. Oh, there any other whys for the words that are standing out for any of you? Implicit stands out because it's so easy to point fingers in other directions. Like, mm -hmm. oh, it's because of capitalism. Oh, it's because of the government. Oh, it's because of greedy CEOs or insert, you know, descriptor here. Mm -hmm. But to actually be complicit in it, I think, makes it a lot more personal mm -hmm. uh, and encourages us to take action more. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So as we think about, if you flip that page over the Poverty Is page over, uh, for those of you who are on online, again, we'll get these to you. Um, <clears throat> you've got poverty abolitionism, um, and what is it? And um, I think it'd be great if someone would be willing to just read that first paragraph above what is poverty abolitionism <clears throat> as we start to frame our the rest of our conversation this evening. Anybody want to read it out loud? Oh, I was going to say Thank you. Thank you. No, yeah, I'm going to read it out loud. It'll be helpful. It goes on the sound. Why is nobody saying it? <laughs> uh, it's a wait for you. Um, <laughs> poverty abolitionists seek to uh, divest from poverty in our consumer choices and investment decisions. 
We support a government actively striving to end scarcity by expanding policies that empower the poor. Standing for shared prosperity, we detest all forms of exploitation and oppose opportunity hoarding in our communities. We are solutionists, doers, prioritizing plan over critique, usefulness over purity, and we must organize. So as you were thinking about this book, uh, being a poet, mm -hmm. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> and you think about the words that we just reflected on, um, or any of the others that still linger for you. How do they, or how could they, inform our actions first as a church and then as individuals? So, thinking about poverty abolitionism mm -hmm. and thinking about the words that have lingered with us, how might they inform our actions as a church or as individuals? You can start throwing stuff out, we'll catch up. <laughs> Carol, do you want to scribe or do you want me to? Okay. <laughs> Go ahead. You sure? Okay. I can do it for you. Every time I think about that sentence, I get overwhelmed. Uh, on how in the world to enact something like what this book is going to You know, uh, Ned said something this morning and Men's prayer breakfast about um, just some of the political actions that have been taking place in this state for the last two or three years in regards to environment, books, abortion, on and on. It doesn't matter. Pick the question. And how in the world would we ever impact that? Yeah. What well, went for me, I mean, I hear what you're saying. I, but I also, not that I disagree, I, I, I think there are some actionable things that they can. When I think of, well, that won't be my complete unabridged list, but I think about context, that was important to me, that understanding the scope of the issue. Um, so how might we take action on that? If I'm doing this correctly, but context. I think about continuing education. We learned a lot by reading this book. I'm not a huge fan of, constant book studies without <clears throat> mm -hmm. but I am a fan of educating, mm -hmm. ongoing education, like the Wednesday night speakers and the educational pieces, those are powerful. So how might we continue to educate our community near and far um, on, on these issues to be better informed citizens as one arrow in the quiver in this issue? There'll be many arrows, but one, education. Personally, for me, it can have an impact on how I spend my money. Mm -hmm. So how do you take your own personal account into place first mm -hmm. before you move on to anything else? So what you're um, I suspect it, it's more than just money. It's about the oh, it's all about the way you live. Oh, yeah. The, the church could have a policy where they will only purchase uh, items from sustainable sources or from impact where the vendors are. like toilet paper, paper towels, dish soap. Bible study materials only from vendors mm -hmm. on this approved. That could be an action of session uh, to direct staff to only purchase, you know, those types of things as a, as a thought. Mm -hmm. That would go there. That one on the side. Yeah. Yeah.
Karen, because here's the it's kind of going wonky. Do you want me to write? <laughs> my um on my computer when it's fine when it's hooked up to the station and the and the go. mouse. Um, the, but the mouse moves itself when it's just over there. I don't even know if it's like literally the breeze. <laughs> it's because the curves are being moved across my screen. There's a gremlin in it. But the gremlin goes away when it's hooked up to my docking station in my office. <laughs> no, <laughs> <isn't it? laughs> That's like what, me. That, you have your mouse in, you have another mouse in your bag and you don't realize that it's on. And <laughs> oh, 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 that happened to me once on a trip. So I was in my purse. Well, that's, that's where you got to bring two, two, two mice. <laughs> I want to add to what you're writing there and to add to Andy's um, was maybe from ethical companies is what you're about to write to, but yeah. also from black owned um, businesses as well, because I know we've started a, you know, a list at work of, of yeah. doing those. Um, at the same time that I was reading this, Tony was working on our retirement investments. <laughs> Good Lord, it's like a you know cognitive dissonance mm -hmm. of okay, and reading of course how we benefited from so many different things like that, but it got me thinking, and I think building on what you said, Carol, I was saying okay, when we leave this earth, be it you know any moment now or many years from now, um, who could we leave money to mm -hmm. that would make a difference in this stuff long term? Because mm -hmm. that really feel felt to me like it's where um, and someone because what am I willing to do today? A magazine. But okay. Comfortable. But on the other hand, it's also one of those, I think it's probably where the most of our wealth would sit too, <clears> would be <throat> leaving it down the line. So I think that mm -hmm. um, a planned giving program that talks about what the church does, but also mm -hmm. an estate or planned giving plan for uh, places that could make generational mm. wealth changes. I'm curious if our foundation mm. has standards for investments. Do they invest in companies that mm. are, you know, whatever, I mean, ethical? If they do, it's yeah. new. I don't think so. I don't Perhaps know. that ought to be something that we look at as well. They're the foundation's investment strategy, just as a thought. Mm. I guess they, although we heard last night, one, or one exception mm. to that, we do invest in pill um, mm. notes, which bring in the below market rate return, but we do it to help church development. Right. Of course, just so, as you think about the enterprise, the foundation <laughs> investment might be so. But I don't, I don't think we're, I don't think the foundation has taken into account social policy kind of investing. So mm. They could. Good. Yeah. <clears throat> and we could start with just a review. You know, although the bulk of what the foundation buys are they're just um, yeah, index so funds, you know, a, okay, a bunch of everything basically. But you, you'd you have to go to different kinds of index funds or different kinds of mm. mutual funds to do that, and it's doable. I'm pleased to announce that we hired a master with very good handwriting. <laughs> oh, nice. Exactly. Yes, indeed. Like, yeah, right, gorgeous. I, know. I can read it. <laughs> <laughs> all those years in school and class. Yeah, that's right. Did, Jerry made me do all this handwriting during the interview <laughs> process. <laughs> handwriting <laughs> samples. Stand up and they wanted someone to counter the other master. <laughs> 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 no, I think education and learning are really interesting, but I, I'm thinking about the word you said, like somebody said, I think it was your context. Um, mm -hmm. And maybe like, you know, as I look at this list in the white um, on this page, um, I like how they've like drilled down in something that's um, you can bite off because I think something like right now it feels like there's a big elephant and we need to eat the whole thing. We don't. But is there a part of the elephant that we could focus on? Mm -hmm. Um mm -hmm. or you know, I recognize it's a systems problem, right? So there's tons of parts, but mm -hmm. it seems like there's parts where we could really dig in as a congregation and focus on that part and make a difference in that part and then 
maybe we eat another part after that. Mm -hmm. I don't know. That's what mm -hmm. I was thinking. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was thinking something along the lines of every month, every three months, there be a like we look at housing and what the, or the eviction issue, or we look at the um, payday lending, where we can everyone can learn, and then what are the small things we can do in that three month period, where whether it be writing our legislators or you know learning about policy. Uh, so I like that. Mm -hmm. Take it in the smaller pieces. It's like size of any bank. Yeah. On the left hand side, um, how do you uh, how do you not have some thoughts about the political action? Mm -hmm. uh, I, I I mean, if you go back to what he said in the book, it's obviously the clearest and biggest sin in this bunch is the lack of uh, equity and uh, money. In the country, uh, you're going to wrap that and be that with our legislation or mm -hmm. war. I guess that's the other way you do it. Mm -hmm. I don't want that. I, I think we also need somebody to help us um, because being a um, organization that's supposed to be separated from state, I still think it's important to take action, but also be mindful of what the boundaries are. And mm -hmm. How do we do that? I know. Well, I know like there's certain rules, like you can't from the pulpit say who to vote for or whatever, you know, yeah. <laughs> there are certain things you do, the status, but there's it. other things you can do, <laughs> like advocate for, advocate both parties or all parties for something. So just understanding what those lines are. So that needs to be part of our education uh, mm -hmm. or have someone who's advising us on that. I yeah. can say that I'm working with some groups that are not for profits that you know have had to look into what is advocacy. Advocacy is a super broad term. Like you can do a whole lot of things that don't yeah get you over that line, but it's words what we've used here, education. Uh, at an earlier conversation, I can't remember this when when Patty Cadora was here or someone else, but that idea that if we bond together as just churches only on the north side and write letters to say, here's the things that we stand for, which could be just Northminster, but we talked about doing the Matthew 25 congregations. Like if we all together, there are things we haven't done, you know, like we would talk about these things. And certainly crime watching and stuff that the group has started is such a, a court watching, not crime, I mean, it is court crime watching. It is <laughs> court watching. <laughs> Um, but I think as you can do that, I'm building on the little things at a time, mm -hmm. but I think just even a letter like that would inform, first of all, it inform people who haven't been part of these discussions where mm -hmm. we're leaning and then put it with other Matthew 25 and then put it across interfaith congregations. Mm -hmm. This is the same faith in action as, you know, committed to fighting poverty. And they're the ones who hosted Matthew Desmond speaking at the State Museum a while ago. That was thousand people there to hear. And, and that's and, and that's the deep dig. That's beyond our letter writing, which is powerful. But if you can multiply that by a factor of ten right. or twenty or thirty, that becomes powerful to legislatures. Um, if it's packaged and done correctly, that's the essence of Matthew twenty-five. Kind of that deeper dig into something broader and bigger scope. So actually we did do that. We did that back in May when we had Our that breath of the world thing. Mm -hmm. And actually what the outcome of that is that when they, they had like 4,444 letters that were delivered mm -hmm. to them. And so now you just have to wait till it gets back in session to see if all those letters will make an impact on that farm bill. So mm -hmm. we we've kind of Step in that direction. So it's that times like 50. Yeah, and it wasn't right. right. Yeah, it wasn't was our group. Right. It was the, you know, everybody from other churches that did break through the world. So it's, right. it's, it's starting. It's a seed to start to do that. It's another arrow. Well, yeah. And I like the idea of education being up there, but it may need to be education with what kind of steps can people take mm -hmm. for action? Because we, we always talk about education and then people may leave going, well, what am I going to supposed to do? And mm -hmm. if we are really intentional about here is one small step or a couple small steps you can take to do something in the that will help move us forward a little faster too i think as cynical as it 
is and was and part of this book, but on page 184, it gave me such reassurance when he said, in other words, the Washington that passed transformational legislation outlawing racial discrimination, expanding access to health care, food and education and slashing the poverty rate was just as broken as the Washington of today. Ordinary Americans still found a way to win as we now must. And the point was, and now no, it's like, oh, that was so money. obvious, but they're like, yeah. <laughs> would we as a congregation be willing to be the siren of uh, social justice as it relates to poverty on our side of any effort? Would our church be willing to be known as that speaking form? And in addition to that, is that what kind of uh, census does that require in, in a church to do something like that? I suspect not everybody in our congregation agrees. Many, many would. Many would. I think the first part that I struggle with that, though, is an answer. I totally agree. And I think the things like we talked about yesterday with the Faber Card Blick program and stuff like that, that we want to be that action. I think where I get a little hesitant is, am I supposed to sell my house? Because as soon as we start having a conversation about what are you doing as a church, you know, you're looking in the mirror and saying, you know, okay. And the fact that the housing rates have gone up so much, we have neighborhood conversations about how much, you know, people are asking for these houses mm -hmm. now that is yeah. ridiculous. <laughs> and you're like, but you know that you're like, oh, well, what will ours be worth? Mm -hmm. And what will that? And I just think being a siren is right versus being like, oh, we, you know, not that you were saying we've got it figured out, but like, no, no, no. what are we doing? What are we, and it's stuff that you're doing. Well, I mean, if you go that way, you kind of got to back it up, right? You got to walk the walk. So you want to give up half your personal network to right. do this? Not just personal. That kind of conviction? And would it matter? And would it matter? Yeah, yeah. I, you know, I, a couple of things. I don't know how it fits into this schedule, but I think we need to, to, to talk to some organizations already in the game. Uh, there, there's this really bad. I know they talked about this on the Canyon trip a lot. That you know, the next NGO comes in and has a big splice for a couple of years, and then mm -hmm. goes quiet or leaves another NGO, and everybody's trying, you know, making remaking a wheel. Um, I think we we could find some really good social service organizations here who have been able to attack certain pieces of this, mm -hmm. and and bring ourselves from this general concept down to something really on the ground in Indy and maybe give us a place to really you know, the other thing I and it's kind of like what Jennifer's saying I, I think we need to be prepared to make little steps I mean it's just you just can't do it any other way and I'd rather that we made a little difference here and there four or five times and then got a reputation than I would to say we have a reputation and then <laughs> try to look around for a little step but saying saying you have a reputation is kind of like giving yourself a nickname. Right. Like, yeah. you know, right. You're not really supposed to do that. Right. You know, right. Your, right. your your friends give you really kind of productive. Yeah. Well, yeah. The one example though, there was one thing in here that stuck out to me as something we might actually be able to do something about, and maybe somebody already is in town, and that is this uptake percentage on uh, or take up. I can't remember which one it is. That that there's this enormous body of uh, allocated federal funds oh, that never that gets is distributed. never drawn, and there are various reasons for that. Some of them statewide, and some of them just that, that we have very difficult ways for individuals to apply. One one thing we could do is train some of us to be navigators in that system. Uh, there are probably other organizations in town that already do that. I don't know. I've never run into that in the social services I've been involved in. But that does seem like something you could actually, you know, you really might help somebody right. next week with what you did. And it might be, you know, 10 people in a year. I don't know. But I, I it, it seems like that would be within our skill sets to take the time to learn that stuff. We got a lot of retirees who don't have to get up and go to work in the morning. <laughs> and, and it would, uh, you might actually begin to make a difference. But I, I think picking off he referred to it as low hanging fruit. Yeah. That's fine. I don't think it's that low hanging, but <laughs> if, if if we could do things like that and then move on to the next, uh, that seems to me to be feasible. Mm -hmm. Make could make a real difference for us, you know, a material number of people. And and it would be within our base of resources, which are 
more limited sometimes than we like. Does that mean I got to put the pitchforks and torches back in the garage? Yeah. <laughs> you know, go ahead. It's so Halloween. You're going to get them back out. You do, you. You need a pitchfork <laughs> to keep yourself up. Right now. <laughs> they were talking about that last night at, at, um, at, the, at the temple when, when we met that there are many mm -hmm. organizations and movements and actions in place that mm -hmm. we could. Yeah. We could support, join, um, help. Um, we don't have to reinvent the wheel. There's a lot going on out there. Right. Mm -hmm. and yeah, he talks about getting into a relationship. I think that's kind of what we're talking about. And a relationship maybe with one particular organization, not again, not trying to cover 20, 20 bases. Right. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, we do some things with Westminster, um, but are we really doing enough? Right. You know, yeah, we do the food pantry. We don't do anything with their children's program. Um, or is the, is that the stuff John's talking about? You know, helping. Yeah, right, that, yeah. Does, does Westminster yeah. offer that? And if they don't, is that something we could? Well, they, they have an after school program. No, but I'm in, in oh. terms of helping people because oh, you're yeah, forgetting yeah, about helping people yeah. fill out forms and yeah, you know, all I, that I, kind I, of stuff. I, if I had to go looking, yeah. I'd probably start with somebody like Legal Aid Society or yeah. or the Christian Legal Aid Clinic. Yeah, which um, yeah. But there may be some other. I, you know, I talked to probably somebody like Gail Rothrock, who's mm -hmm. been in the social service world. We have a bunch of other social workers around this group. Did uh, they, at last time, did they mention any, or did they have a list? They were, they were talking about a food. Uh, the yeah, the guy that, well, Dave Meyer, yeah, yeah, yeah. Knows, and who is a Presbyterian, although he's kind of a gadfly Presbyterian, <laughs> but he's real active in a bunch, and he's, yeah. I can't remember the name of the one he's really yeah. in charge of, but Right yeah. for the world, you mean, or no, 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 yeah, something other no, hunger, it's it's hunger, 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 hunger. Hunger He's also really involved with Good Wages Initiative. Yeah. Okay. I think he might have been the brainchild for that. Okay. Yeah. Like you're talking about Dave Miner, or yeah. 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 So uh, one of the things that we also want to do is that you're you're leading right into I think a really important piece of this conversation. <laughs> Northminster already is active in some real specific ways. Yeah. And I would love for us to identify those ways. We're not going to be able to identify all of them right now, but we can identify many of them. And someone else, um, Nancy, it might have been you, said deeper. Mm -hmm. um, that there is an opportunity for us to go deeper rather than broader mm -hmm. and so what might that look like with some of the organizations that we're already working with and the ones that are on the horizon so while you think <clears> let, me, <throat> let me throw one out to you i mentioned this last night at session karen mentioned it first and then i mentioned some of the statistics karen talked about fast a program through faye picard blick Mm -hmm. The Fay is a group that I think does some of this work, John, where they, they actually have some people that are working to help folks have access to some of the funds that they currently don't have access to. Could you say the name again? Fay, F-A-Y. Uh, no, E, I don't think. F-A-Y, second word, Bicard, B-I-C-C-A-R-D. Last word, Glick. Everybody knows Glick in Indianapolis, the G-L-I-C-K. Um, those are their funder. I mean, it's not magic. Like that's <laughs> that's where they got started. I think is with some of those names I on that think list. Faye Picard Glick was like Jean Glick's mother. Oh, okay. I think that's her one woman. Oh, okay. So, her um, or sister or something. This organization was an organization that eight years ago was about to go away, and um, Patrice, an incredible fire, fiery, amazing human, um, was brought in to kill the organization. <laughs> and uh, put it to bed and she basically said no this is my neighborhood this is my uh these are, this is where my kids went to school we're not going to do that and she turned the thing around and uh it now has uh nine i think nine different areas that it is investing in the neighborhood um doing incredible work everything from some of the things that you just mentioned they have a they have a food bank they have pre -floral. They have adult care center. They've got all these things going on, but then there's there are these other investments, um, and they're currently looking at starting another program called Fast, uh, which is a way to accelerate 
um, a small number of families completely out of risk of poverty. Um, so there's more detail on that we can give you later, but that's an organization that if you looked at and you said, what would it mean for us to go deeper in that organization as a church? So it's not just that one, there are many. So now I would love to hear the organizations that and, and ministries that we're already doing that may provide us the opportunity to jump deeper into the pool um, with them. I, I think, you know, as we're thinking about that, the other thing is that there's like a uh, change in, in individual families or pocket of families, right? But there's also that systematic, like legislative. So I think when we're thinking about these things, we probably just need to have like some type of leveling. And there's also like change in church action and then personal action. Right. So I think there's yeah. like, these yep. levels we all need to think about. And I think the organizations are going to help us with making, you know, some, some of that legislative change and also some of that like impact to an individual family or for individual mm -hmm. families or whatever. Yep. But I think we kind of need to have like a model of like, what are those levels and what are the one or two key things we're going to do each one of those does Great. that make sense the yeah. ones i've seen are the concentric circles so you start with the i yeah and then it's what are we going to do as a church and then what are we going to do with the westminster to say the card set it up and then what are we going to do with the right the larger elected yeah i love that mm -hmm. well family problems should go on that list yeah yeah yeah, yeah and they do have a program of of um or navigate helping their mm -hmm. people navigate the system. Yeah. I don't know if it gets beyond direct housing related it does. things, but, yeah. but and it uh, goes for two years. Yeah, they have a big aftercare program. Yeah, yeah. So that you know, really follows these families. Do, do they advise them on how to deal with SNAP and, and yes, um, oh, yeah. so, I think so. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Dolly. Dolly, we can't hear you, Dolly. Dolly, we can't hear you. Dolly, we can't hear you. She's not talking to us. <laughs> Just to um, let you know, I'm adding in um, yeah. in response to Brian's question about where we already involved possible places we could go deeper. These are ones we've already mentioned. So favorite card click, especially the FAST program, Westminster Neighborhood Ministries got talked about, Family Promise, um, Court Watching and GMA, and then Bread for the World. Exodus. Exodus, thank you. Well, I think we also do the food pantry. Second, do we? No, What did you say? Why? Hmm. Why? Yeah. It, it's Firefly. It's Firefly. Firefly. Oh, it used to be uh, Children's Bureau. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. 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 and it was something else too. Okay. It was, it's it's well, yeah. family service. You should know. It what was are family. It was family service. Family service and Children's Bureau merged. Right. 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 Family service it, became family Firefly. first for a while, but then they merged. Now it's Firefly. It's Firefly. Now. Are we doing something with them as a church? I don't know where. We'll take it. I think it doesn't go on. Yeah, no, it doesn't go there. This is where we're already. It doesn't go there. Yeah, so the question. Go ahead. 55. Well, there's a big question mark because as far as how many families are going to be parents are. We're working on it. Okay. Because we had a big discussion with Deacon about that. So I think. Well, I would put Habitat on that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So to Jennifer's question, or to Jennifer, Jennifer's statement about these, uh, Jennifer Shivers, sorry, to Jennifer, uh, Jennifer <laughs> Shivers, um, the one I'm related to, um, <laughs> the, this layers, or as Jen Deswanner said, this kind of concentric circles, one of the things that's really fascinating about these organizations that we've named is they actually can help us with all of those. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it, it's not that we shouldn't be doing the work ourselves. We should absolutely a thousand percent. But these are also questions we can ask. So when Karen and I have had conversations with Homer and Patrice, mm -hmm. these conversations have come up. Well, there are things that you can do at the state house. 
And so they, they've they got a list of things that you can do at the state. Here's what we need. Here are the bills that are coming up. Because then we don't have to do the research on what the bills are. Mm -hmm. They know. Mm -hmm. And they can just hand it to you. It's like Emily's work on, in environmental stuff. Yeah. Yeah. She can give us a list of the bills that we need yeah. to be lobbying for or need to be writing letters about. So we don't, that's a space where we don't have to do that, you know, that ground floor work. Um, so uh, I love the idea of putting together some kind of a map, Jen, mm -hmm. um, to, to think about these concentric circles, how we can mm -hmm. have these levels of input and impact in our world. Yeah, that's beautiful. And I think if we think about like Matthew 25 or whatever, like, this could be like having a map on, you know, it's just not just a thing to us. This is a map of how we engage with that. Or mm -hmm. well, the actions. <laughs> yeah. And I've heard folks bring up a couple of times um, political advocacy and like, how do we, how do some, I mean, it seems like some of the congregation is comfortable with letter writing, but what are, what are other steps in some of that? Um, there's a, a, a event that goes on yearly called ecumenical advocacy days that happens every april i don't know if you've either one of you yeah. have been Soft. a part of that is that Soft. still that's is office still... of public witness the denomination yeah right yeah yeah and but we work with others so then we don't run into the problems of what can and can't we do mm -hmm. as a faith-based organization um and they they train you both on um advocacy how to do advocacy but also um what's going on right now what can you do today and tomorrow um, when it was held in person, we would go over and do immediately do um, advocacy in our senators and our representatives. You go to Washington. You, I mean, when it's in well, person. When it's in person, I don't know if it's still virtual. Now. Doing it. I feel like it was virtual since COVID. Uh, if it's virtual, it's a lot more accessible um, because yeah. people who work can sign up for it and not have to travel someplace. And yeah. I wanted to add another reason to work through the programs, I think is obviously these are incredibly complex. And as people have said, they've done so much of the work, but also because I've worked with organizations that sometimes have been the target of things that is from uninformed or badly informed people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm working with some, so that I say that to say Fair Housing Center, is challenging to work with sometimes, but they really do their homework. We have developers we work with who do affordable housing. And if somebody decides to target them and send a bunch of pictures to Channel 6, Channel 6 runs with it. And we all end up thinking they're terrible and they're not because those things were actually already fixed a while ago, but they still decided to send 75 letters to the attorney general's office mm -hmm. because they wanted to form a tenants union. Mm -hmm. And my point is it's easy to be missed and ill-informed. It's not like any company's perfect, but these guys know like they're much more proximate to the issue so that you don't end up with, you know, well-intentioned people, mm -hmm. but saying, I saw that show and we need to go pick it. Like, mm -hmm. stop yourself. <laughs> Work <laughs> with an organization right. that's like, yeah. so working through these issues more yeah. closely. The, the, the piece that I'm confused about, or frankly, not sure, you know, Matthew 25, you know, when we did the mission team work, you know, mm -hmm. Carol wrote down everything we're doing that's Matthew 25. And that's all, it was all very true. It was a fairly exhaustive mm -hmm. list. Mm -hmm. um, but we have to create that sense of depth with whatever we do. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, the mission team year, several years ago had that endowment as part of that second campaign that every year, mm -hmm. I don't know, I, I think it's done a little bit differently, but, but a fairly substantial sum of money is, rolls off of that mm -hmm. to try to make a meaningful impact mm -hmm. in one area of mission work. And that was kind of getting at that idea of a deep mm -hmm. dig beyond a thousand bucks. Here's 15 or 20,000. Do yeah. something more significant. Okay. Right. So I think I celebrate our current work and we do significant. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. What we're doing now is not deep digs. We're writing thousand, two, three, four, five thousand dollar checks. We're sending six people on a habitat build, which is great. We send volunteers to some of these things, but the but I feel that the greater the general member of our church does not participate in those things. Mm -hmm. And through their giving, they may they, they supply the funds to write those mission checks, mm -hmm. which is in, which is important. Mm -hmm. I as I think about these initiatives, when I think about Matthew 25 specifically. I think 
and I know it's I'm a broken record on this, but deep substantive digs on trying to make a difference. Now that may be going deep to Brian's point with one or two. Mm -hmm. You know, for, for instance, one example might be let's roll off funding into one or two. Let's roll all volunteers into one and two. Let's make that, you know, let's start going to their board meetings and participating in governance and getting engaged with them. So I, I'm really excited about that opportunity to go to go deep and to, to make a more substantive difference with these organizations. Yeah. Well, one of the things I love about this group that's gathered here um, is that we have members of our mission team that are often the ones that um, set the mission priorities, that decide about the funding, that make decisions about what opportunities we're going to offer and whether it's Habitat or not and things like that. And I love that we've got some members of that team here tonight hearing this feedback um, that, that can take that into those meetings. I was thinking it's great that mission here that deacons are here, that adults yes, Ed is here, well. that because yeah. it's going to take sort of all that stuff yeah. to kind of take everybody. Yeah. Well, one group yeah. that actually the church is a member of is Prosperity yeah. Indiana. Okay. And Prosperity Indiana actually has things in place that deals in any member here. I think we have up to 50 members of the church and a lot of members of the mission team are on that. I think some people who are court watchers are on receive those emails and everything. And you can go to different events that they'll talk about how to push legislation and stuff like that. So it isn't mm -hmm. like that we're not there. It's like are people aware of Prosperity Indiana and what it does? They're going to be here at the Mission Fair oh, good. on October 8th. Good. So, uh, and I think that, you know, if you don't know what it is, go over and ask them. And they'll tell you. I mean, there's some really sharp people in Prosperity Indiana, and they will flood you with emails if that's what you choose to do, you know, and if you want to know more. So, I mean, it isn't like that we don't know. It's just like how much time do we have? But there are, but that is a place to answer some of the legislative legislative questions and where to write mm -hmm. letters and how to address your letters and to whom do you address your letters and stuff. So it's there. It's just digging into it. Mm -hmm. Good. Doesn't that faith in Indiana group do they mm -hmm. do this stuff too? Because they're like advocacy mm -hmm. Christian centered. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. There are a lot of a lot of organizations that are doing the work. The team is doing incredible yeah. work too. That was different from faith and they, they are. They are. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm actually having a conversation with folks from Faith in Indiana tomorrow. Um, but uh, I, there are a lot of people that are asking the questions that this group is asking right now, mm -hmm. and um, a lot of people. I don't mean like. The entire state of Indiana, but I mean, like there, there are there are religious leaders and people that are participating in faith communities that are starting to ask the questions around not reinventing the wheel, investing in programs that already exist, pushing deeper into this. Literally, is a conversation that I had with, with Rabbi Spiegel. Mm -hmm. This is his passion. <laughs> I mean, he's yeah. so we have some really important voices that are already asking these mm -hmm. questions and pushing our state legislators also to um, stop thinking, um, stop taking these little bites, these little nibbles and push in. Yeah. I have one thought uh, thinking about the mission here and I apologize to make you the part. Yeah. Um, I wonder if you, Karen and Brian, could think about ways to help mission tell people how to how to visit the mission fair. I think it's too easy to grab a donut and coffee and kind of go, hey, 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 thanks for being here. You know, I wonder if you could help people mm -hmm. think about what should we ask these people? And what I was thinking is ask them how Northminster can make a difference for them. Like if a lot of people ask, they might get different questions. Mm -hmm. They might get the same question a thousand times. But usually I'm so like you're bringing these people here and it's easy. It's just like we were saying with Dave Karen. It's easy to just decide, oh, I'm just not going to church that day. <laughs> you know, because I'm not going to do it. That's not a problem, you know, for people who opt out of that. But I think it's easy to float through. And you've obviously put a lot of work in um, mission to have these people there. Mm -hmm. They could have really surface conversations or we could go deep. 
Yeah. 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 Put together a scavenger hunt. I was thinking you scavenger hunt. Find the organization that, so, and right. I encourage oh, adults to like take that. that as well. And like, get the it. signature of. Yeah. That. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And maybe for them, them yeah. right. maybe for them it would be what's deep for them. Like, like what is the deep? Yeah. What do they wish people knew? What do they yeah. wish we all knew yeah. about them? That is Thank, just you. Yeah. Thank you all. Thank you. Jen, Shivers. Sing well. Mm -hmm. I think for me, like, let I know we mentioned I like some of that policy and legislative stuff. I I wonder if there's anything that we could do to, you know, we're we're in a donut here, but there's the larger part of the state that makes up some of those changes and what can we do to educate our sister congregations who might be in the uh, <laughs> other parts more, of the state? More, more, yeah, yeah. And, and they might not have, like, I don't know. I just, I just feel like we have to activate some other pockets if we're actually going to make systematic change. Yes, and I don't know. Do I don't know how we do that. We're but, living in a very little pocket. Right? Marion County is. I, 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 I was trying not to use the word blue, blue red. Yeah. red. Yeah. But, but I agree. If, yeah. if we don't start other little pockets, mm -hmm. we will never change. Yeah. So I was just thinking, like, I wonder if any of these organizations are able to help us activate our brothers and sisters who vote. For uh, I mean, who vote in other districts and whatever? Because I I think to really make a difference, that's what's going to have to happen. So yeah. his that's his point. One of his points is that this is something that impacts every community, regardless of what the community looks like. Whether you're a rural farm community or an urban center, poverty impacts you. Mm -hmm. And whether you're wealthy or poor, poverty impacts you. But they might not be reading these types. That's of what I'm saying. Yeah. Right. So his his point. That's one of the things. That, that's one of the questions he's asking is for us, for all of us, mm -hmm. to start this revolution, to start this uh, activism around how do we get the information into the hands of people that are also going to be making decisions, whether it's how they vote or how they live, um, that impacts uh, the greater problem. Um, I'm part of the interfaith community, as you all know, and it's one of the questions we've asked is how do you have this conversation in my hometown, Marion, Indiana, where faith diversity is, are you Protestant or Catholic? <laughs> you know, so you're not thinking about Muslims and, and Jews and Sikhs and Hindus and Buddhists, and you're not thinking about that. Uh, they're there. They're there. My, some of my interfaith folks have corrected me. They live there. They just do it quietly. <laughs> They're praying at home. They're not praying at a at a. They're praying. They don't get shot. Yeah, yeah. They're, oh, they're not praying, praying at a masjid. They're not. They're you know they're <laughs> driving to Indianapolis to participate in mm -hmm. High Holy Days. Yeah. You know. Um, so, yeah, it's it's a it's a challenge for sure. Well, I guess like activism, you know, like spreading the word whatever has to be part of our like what might some of our actions are mm -hmm. activating our state or our i don't know if there's any rural matthew 25 churches in indiana but we could certainly because it's all perhaps how many were in in the first yeah. yeah. so then I mean, that would be yeah, it we'd already have yeah. one connection but that would be a place how many churches there are at least 25 in our presbytery and, and but, I but statewide is what the place is asking. Yeah. Oh, there are there at least 25 in my presbytery too, which yeah. is yeah. northern yeah. India. So I mean where we could find a church in a small community and back and forth so they understood issues that we're facing in a metropolitan area and we could it's right here. Um, understand adopt issues. the church. What's the what's the total number? Yes, yeah. total number total congregation. I think there's 68. So, in the, and um, Whitewater Valley is in this in the 60s too. Mm -hmm. So, you're looking at uh, less, they're about 40 percent of the yeah. congregations being Matthew 25. Yeah. Um, 
that's now you may think of that as astonishingly low, but Matthew 25 oh, as, as a as a program has actually only been around for fairly, three years. Yeah, how many? So three or four, three years. Or four years. So barely before COVID. Yeah. So uh, if you think about oh that in that amount of time you've gotten forty percent of the churches to yeah. sign on, that's actually pretty dang good. Um, I'm sure, we'd love to have it be a hundred percent, but because it was during COVID that we signed on. Yeah, as I recall that mission team of 2020, I mean, December 2020. Yeah, I think it started, maybe it's, it's I think with 2018, maybe. I think yeah, so, yeah. I remember they rolled it out at the GA. Yeah. Hmm. I've got one last big question. <laughs> the alpha in this book, to me, uh, was clearly the calling to change the IRS codes in America mm. and to change enforcement of the law and to extract money from the top one percenters who he claims are paying or are, are illegally avoiding taxes in our government. Mm. Or legally. Or legally. Yes. Or and, legally and, yeah. and, he, and he claims that, that that's enough money to fund poverty in America. I don't know how true all this stuff is, but I'm, I'm a skeptic about what he's saying there. I'd like more information about mm. that. It's accessible. Mm -hmm. But if we if we really do believe that that is true, how do we support the workings to change that? Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, uh, taking on Congress from Gessler Boulevard is a little bit much, <laughs> but surely there's people that are actively working on this that are, like you said, once again, going back to supporting the lobby and so forth. And do and do we do that? Do we? I don't know. It's keeping me awake at night. Mm -hmm. I think we need to understand what the other side is. These pro-life Christian, um, I, I was in federal law enforcement. The IRS has been neutered for years. Yeah. I, I mean, when I started in 88, they were very powerful and they've kind of backed. But we, you know, it is it is intimidating. I have a book, I think Carol has it now. It was called Unholy. It was about how Trump yeah. put together the alt right and the Christian right. Yes. Mm -hmm. And it's mm -hmm. the money that they have power that they have and so we have to face the political realities a little bit but um it, it's going to take it's going to take a real fight you know they were trying to defund the irs during that stupid debt ceiling thing they're trying to do it now yeah because yeah. they they're they don't want to pay their fair share so it's uh, i think we're also fighting our culture like mm -hmm. capitalism oh, yeah. right? And no matter how much we try, we live in a capitalistic society and have to personally abide. I mean, we can't get outside of that box. We're in that box. Um, I guess you can. You could like become off the grid, right? Um, so I think it's really hard. And you still yourself. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah I, I, I think there's lots of risk in some ways, like risk of being called communist, risk of, you know, I mean, it's so definitely countercultural. But they don't understand the those people, I guess you could say that, those people don't understand <laughs> what it, it mm -hmm. is, what things really are, because yeah. they don't want to look. They're in their tight little mm -hmm. narrow world and they don't, they're afraid to look, because if they look, they may find the truth. They may be this like, Oh, well, no well, I, I have to say I'm guilty. Like I, so one of the things that I would, I would do a quick commercial, and it's five after seven, so we want to respect <laughs> time too. But a quick commercial. There's a presentation. It's the reason why we changed teams night this coming mm -hmm. month, um, by the author of a book called The Sum of Us. Mm -hmm. And this this book, I've not read it yet. So full disclosure. Well, a bunch um, of us have, <laughs> but but many have in this congregation. I know. Um, but the, the premise behind the book is racism mm -hmm. impacts all of us, not just 
marginalized people of color. And um, the same is true for poverty. The expense of poverty for everyone is great. And uh, so that's the kind of the meta level conversation that we we need we could be a part of having. Um, whether or not, Jerry, everybody becomes an, an lobbyist and activist, I can't control that. But what we can do is, can we provide access points for us to be educated mm -hmm. around these different issues and how they intersect with us? They cost us tremendously, not just financially, mm -hmm. but just as, as humanity. It costs us greatly. And... Um, you know, the gospel work is dangerous work. It is it, it is not work that, um, you know, let me start preaching, but... Well, look what happened to Jesus. That's what I was going to yeah. say. <laughs> I read your mind. Yeah, imagine that, Carol. We were thinking the same thing. Um, the, the narrative that we have turned the Jesus story into... Um, is one that has actually been detrimental to the actual gospel work mm -hmm. of uh, liberating the poor, feeding the hungry, mm -hmm. the blind see, the the lame walk, the prisoners are set free. That's that's the gospel work, right? And so um, Jesus being killed by the state is actually what happened we made it into a religious fight right and it was not a religious fight he was killed by the state rome killed jesus um and uh that's not comfortable it's not an easy conversation to have but it's the reality of the gospel text and, it, and it's also what struck me last night at, at the, when we were at the temple and one of the questions this was related to chapter six but it says, why do you think Desmond believes that among the advanced democracies, America stands out for its embrace of class extremities? Um, we stand up because, as our friend Gertha Perkins said to us one night on a call, she said, how do you fix a system that was broken from the beginning? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we were, we're a country mm -hmm. built on class extremities. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so now here we are, hundreds of years later, trying mm -hmm. to figure out how to, to deal with that. I mean, you know, one, one question I go back to, and maybe some of you have better answers to this than I do, but um, the one major breakthrough that helped a whole lot of people in an awfully unlikely setting was during the George W. Bush administration and the sort of capturing of religious interest in funding African 